I think number two, what you've got to do is really think about and summarize the scope of what you've heard in the last three days. I don't know if any of you read the blog post I did on the World Healthcare blog a couple of weeks ago, and you know, I sort of wrote that you know, it's January 15, 2020. I just spoke at WIT 14.0 as the closing keynote speaker. And here's what we've learned about the world of healthcare. It's now January 15, 2020. What has happened in the last 12 years? What are the trends that have occurred? And if you haven't read it, I'd encourage you to go to read it because we know where we're going in the future. We know the trends that are going to unfold. We know the realities that are unfolding before our very eyes. We know we're moving to a world of preventative health care. We know that we're moving to a world of DNA-based med- medicine in which you know, what we're going to do is we're going to understand what it is you are likely to inherit and we are going to change the entire treatment regime so that we're focused on solving your problems before you develop those chronic conditions instead of fixing you after you're sick. We know that we're headed for a world of bioconnectivity. That's what I call it. You know, the hospital's going to go virtual. We're going to take a lot of non-critical care patients. We're going to move them into their homes. We're going to move them out into the community. We're going to focus on home-based health care. And we're going to be able to monitor their conditions from afar through very sophisticated, connected electronic medical devices. We know that, you know, the whole concept of collaboration, the whole concept of teamwork, the whole concept of how we share insight and diagnosis and treatment is going to change as the Facebook generation inherits the healthcare system that we have today. We know that we're going to have a more rapid adoption of new ideas because the next generation coming into play doesn't carry the old traditional change stigmas that we have with the current generation who, who struggle you know, with the use of technology within a healthcare institution. We know that we're in a situation in which we're going to have customer-driven, retail-oriented customer service throughout the healthcare delivery system because consumers will come to demand it. They're not going to put up anymore with cold, callous, friendly, impersonal service when they're walking into retail organizations and they're getting you know, retail customer care that is second to none. We know that we're entering a world of pervasive, massive connectivity and that every single device around us is becoming plugged in. You know, look, I often joke to my wife in this world of pervasive connectivity, things are going to you know, get a little out of hand. One day I'll get up on my way scale, it's going to send an email to my fridge. You know, don't let Jim in today. You know, we have to manage its implementation. But we know that this is leading us to a world which is going to provide unprecedented opportunity. We know the cloud is going to play a very significant role. We know that we're, you know, the, the precipice of this era where the standards are going to unfold through massive, rapid, global adoption by the technology industry at a very rapid pace. We know that we're in a situation in which we have to change the paradigm for the delivery of medical knowledge. Medical knowledge is now doubling every eight years. And that's a number that's going to six years, you know, in the not too distant future. We know that the typical doctor, nurse, practitioner cannot keep up with the rapid growth of knowledge. So we know that everybody's becoming a specialist. And we know that we're, you know, putting in place hospitalists who simply have the job of knowing where all the specialists are. And so we know that we have to do some very significant structural change in terms of everything we do with medical knowledge. We're moving away from a world that involves, you know, concentrated single delivery of knowledge that is going to sustain a medical professional throughout their career to a world of just-in-time knowledge in which we're going to continually, constantly upgrade and enhance their knowledge on an ongoing basis. We know that we're faced with a situation of increasing scientific velocity, new discoveries, new methodologies, new pharmaceuticals, new bioconnectivity products, new bio, bio body parts. You know, the rate of scientific advance that is occurring today because of the global idea mind, we share insight, research, and development faster than ever before. So new discoveries happen faster than ever before. And last but not least, we know that we're sort of on the edge of this cliff where, where, where the system is so horrifically broken. We know that something big needs to be done to fix it. We know that we're on the edge of the, you know, the, 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 the emergence of a new mindset in this city and in this country. You know, that maybe we need new ways of fixing things and and approaching things. Maybe we need to tackle the big problems that exist, that challenge us so much, that could make us globally uncompetitive in the world. Maybe we need to fix it faster than we think. I think, you know, looking back from 2020, I think it was right around 2008 that everything came together that provided a lot of velocity. What do you do with this? Folks, you've got to stop obsessing over what's going on right now. You have to turn off CNBC. I think, I, you know, what I'm advising all of my clients, whether they're blue chip organizations, whether they're associations, groups of professionals, 
we need to be focused on the future. We need to be focused on opportunity, and we need to be focused on how do we innovate to get there. 